we frequently hear that body language says as much as, if not more than, the words we express. Given that we so regularly non-verbally convey what we can't, or don't need, to state for all to hear, it bodes well to pick up familiarity with this other, implicit language. This is a language each human was once familiar with. Before the improvement of verbal language, our bodies and faces were the main methods for human correspondence. Also, it was the face that needed to flag our most nuanced emotions. Interpreting outward appearances is something of an underappreciated skill, however, we know a considerable amount about how emotions show as outward appearances. That is the thing that this rundown is about. Chapter 1 Our emotions are the result of development are still receptive to the worries of our progenitors. On the off chance that you've ever been humiliated in the wake of sobbing hysterically during a Pixar film, you may have wished you could make your emotions less noticeable. Yet, outward shows of emotion like these are in reality exceptionally valuable developmental apparatuses. These occasionally wild enthusiastic responses are intrinsic, they're set off by very similar things that our precursors needed to manage. For example, creatures were the fundamental danger to our predecessors, and a portion of these predators have been around so long that they've become engraved on our cerebrum, continually inspiring a dreadful response. Swedish analyst Arne Oman tried this hypothesis in 1993. He needed to decide if individuals today are more touchy to things like bugs and snakes, which would have been a danger to our precursors also. Thus, Oman demonstrated his subjects a picture of an insect joined by an electric stun. He at that point rehashed this methodology with a picture of a pretty bloom, likewise joined by a stun. A solitary electric stun combined with the image of the creepy crawly was adequate for individuals to respond with dread when indicated the picture of the insect alone. Interestingly, it took a lot more stuns to condition individuals to fear the picture of the bloom. Okay, yet shouldn't something be said about a more present-day danger, similar to weapons? Oman rehashed the examination, this time matching a stun with a picture of a cutting-edge weapon and afterward with a picture of a bug. Once more, the old dread demonstrated all the more remarkable, guineas pigs accepting similarly as long to respond frightfully to the weapon as they did to respond to the blossom, while the arachnid remained inherently startling, this is solid proof, proposing that our emotions, particularly dread-based ones, are pre-worn stuff from our precursors and their encounters. Chapter 2, Youth Injury Can Prompt Unstable Emotions, Particularly When It Rehashes Familiar Examples. Some of the time our emotions can make no sense. On the off chance that you have a dread of statures, at that point you likely realize that, when remaining on a tall structure, Regardless of whether the rooftop is evaded by a high railing and a security net, you'll generally fear falling. Unreasonable emotions like these can be amazingly groundbreaking, particularly if they're the after-effect of youth injury. Simply consider Tim, one of the creator's customers. As a little fellow, Tim's dad had a propensity for prodding him in a manner that, to a few, may appear to be sufficiently innocuous, to Tim, notwithstanding. It seemed to be savage and cold-hearted. For instance, while figuring out how to ride a bike, Tim, like most kids, would periodically tumble off. At the point when this occurred, his dad would chuckle at him and tell others how Tim scarcely figured out how to jump on the bicycle before tumbling off once more. This injury stayed with Tim and made him amazingly delicate to any type of prodding. In this way, if Tim gets energetically prodded for losing a tabletop game, he will in general unreasonably lash out of resentment. If we make this a stride further and follow more broad human injury back to our progenitors, we'll see that our passionate responses can be significantly more unstable. Such basic responses happen in surprising spots. For example, a dignitary at the Creator's College clarified how he could resist the urge to panic, cool, and gathered when managing employees who reject the proposition that he put a great deal of exertion into. At the point when he stalls out in rush hour gridlock, in any case, it's an alternate story. The dignitary gets extraordinary, silly street rage. In all honesty, 
however, this is a response that returns to our progenitors. Our precursors didn't have vehicles, however, the region was essential to them, as was having the option to move. Being kept down by an adversary was a typical and upsetting experience that could have destructive outcomes. That is the reason a gridlock can trigger an antiquated enthusiastic example and cause those recognizable nonsensical upheavals. Chapter 3, Pity is Uncovered However caused a commotion, contracted cheeks, and extended lips, since you have a superior thought of where your emotions originated from, how would you perceive the emotions of others? We should look at one specific photo to perceive what we can decide. In 1971, the press distributed a photo of Betty Shirley, who had quite recently lost her child to a pedophile ring in Texas. The appearance all over is one of bitterness, yet what precisely makes that so self-evident? One of the clearest signs is the raising of the internal purposes of the eyebrows, simply over the nose. This is one of the most solid signs since it's an automatic response. Moreover, regardless of whether somebody is attempting to shroud their bitterness, you will frequently have the option to select this indication. Furthermore, you can tell that somebody's trouble is overpowering when a vertical wrinkle shows up between the caused a stir, making the articulation considerably more sensational. In the photo, the force of Betty Shirley's trouble can be perused on her brow alone, you can see the improved eyebrows and the vertical wrinkle. Yet, different pieces of her face likewise deceive her trouble. In a similar photo, Betty's lips are on a level plane extended out framing a tragic frown. Such a frown regularly extends until the mouth is open, and the bitterness is then additionally communicated through crying and howling. While this is likely the motivation behind the underlying augmenting of the lips, it's more normal these days for individuals to attempt to contain the emotion and smother the desire to moan. Another indication of misery is Betty's contracted cheeks, the cheeks are somewhat raised and are more conspicuous all over. This constriction can likewise raise the sides of the lips, which is the reason individuals grasped by misery frequently look as though they're grinning. To precisely distinguish this dismal grin, focus on the cheeks, if the lips are being pulled up by contracted cheeks, the individual is communicating trouble, not satisfaction. Chapter 4, Outrage is shown by brought down temples, glaring eyes, and slight lips, however, signals can change socially. To analyze the indications of outrage, how about we go to an alternate subject? In 1997, an image was taken of Maxine Kinney while she was at the preliminary of the man indicted for assaulting and killing her 38-year-old little girl. Maxine, limited by cops, yelled a front and attempted to assault the man who removed her little girl from her. Her face was the very image of outrage. We should begin again at the brow. Maxine's eyebrows are brought down and attracted together a glare. Underneath this frown, her eyes scowl at the man who killed her girl. Her jaw is held and her lips are dainty and stepped back, uncovering grasp teeth. Of every one of these indications of outrage, the most dependable is the diminishing of the lips. This is another programmed event that can't be controlled willfully making it valuable when attempting to distinguish whether somebody is concealing their indignation. It's one of the main signs that outrage is fermenting inside somebody and can even show up before the individual is intentionally mindful of it. That being stated, not every person with tight lips is furious, the genuine sign is the point at which somebody's lips become more slander than they typically are. You ought to likewise know that not all indications of outrage are all-inclusive. They shift from culture to culture. Take the indigenous individuals in Papua New Guinea, for instance. While communicating wild displeasure and expected savagery, they close their mouths and fix their lips. This is something contrary to what we find in the Western world, where individuals normally open their mouths and yell to communicate outrageous displeasure. Then again, when furious Papua New Guineans show an open mouth, this implies their displeasure is controlled and they are prepared to talk instead of resort to physical savagery. By and by, this is something contrary to Westerners, 
who show controlled outrage by shutting their mouths and containing the affront they'd, in any case, let free. Chapter 5 The eyes are the place to search for dread and shock, unobtrusive hints will assist you with differentiating. Envision living in a skyscraper high rise and sitting calmly on your overhang, when out of nowhere a body falls past you on its way to the cold earth. Odds are, your enthusiastic response would be a declaration of either dread or shock. Yet, how might an eyewitness differentiate? This can be dubious since signs, for example, raised eyelids are equivocal and could demonstrate both dread and shock. Along these lines, we should take a gander at another photo that catches the occurrence depicted previously. In 1978, a lady doing a special trick on a New York skyscraper lost her balance and tumbled to the ground beneath, seriously harming herself. Incredibly, picture taker Lou Liotta caught the lady as she was falling past two men who were remaining on their overhang. Likewise caught was the demeanor on the men's appearances, and, for this situation, the most noticeable highlights are their raised eyelids. Given the circumstance and the look in their eyes, the men are probably communicating shock, on the off chance that they were communicating dread, their eyelids would be raised significantly higher. The contrast between a look of dread and a look of shock is slight and differs from individual to individual, yet there are explicit signs to pay special mind to. At the point when you see ten slower eyelids that cause the eyes to show up huge and solidified, this is a certain indication of dread. We see this in a 1973 photo that caught roller derby skater Charlie O'Connell in midair, not long before he's going to fall. O'Connell is startled. His lower eyelids are tense and his upper eyelids are raised very high, his eyes appear to swell out in childish style. Notwithstanding, individuals can take a stab at concealing their emotions, particularly about fear. Be that as it may, the strain in the lower eyelids is something we can't control, so be keeping watch for this component. It will consistently sell out somebody's actual emotions. Chapter 6 Somebody's grin and voice can demonstrate various types of bliss, yet not all grins are certified. If you've ever observed the essences of loved ones inviting back a friend or family member from a deployment in the military, at that point chances are you've seen the radiating grins that go with articulations of genuine happiness. While somebody's grin is the most unmistakable and general indication of upbeat emotions, the voice additionally has a significant impact. All things considered, a grin can imply numerous varieties of delight, from entertainment, unwinding, and sexy joy, to help, invigoration, and appreciation. In this way, to more readily distinguish the genuine emotion that is being felt, we should go to the voice. English therapists Sophie Scott and Andrew Calder found that by focusing on the voice, Individuals thought that it was anything but difficult to recognize the different shades of delight referenced previously. Furthermore, this is key because the grin is an intricate articulation and not one that consistently connotes pleasure. For instance, numerous individuals will utilize a grin just out of graciousness, without feeling any pleasant emotion. Yet, this doesn't mean it is difficult to peruse somebody's grin. For example, 19th-century French nervous system specialist Duchenne de Boulogne built up an inquisitive strategy for electrically initiating different facial muscles. He explored different avenues regarding willing patients and watched some fascinating outcomes. Duchenne found that when he initiated the zygomatic significant muscle, the muscle that makes our lips structure a grin, the patient didn't generally look cheerful. Yet, when his patients reacted to a joke, he found that, Notwithstanding grinning, the orbicularis oculi, the muscle around the eye, was likewise initiated. What's more, this is the genuine piece of information to an authentic grin, the roundabout muscle around the eye can't be willfully contracted, so give exceptional consideration to it on the off chance that you need to be certain that somebody's grin is the genuine article. Chapter 7 Untruths are hard to identify, yet miniature articulations can lead the prepared eye to reality. Recognizing reality and falsehood can at times involve life and demise. 
Envision being a specialist who needs to make sense of if a self-destructive patient is coming clean when he professes to feel vastly improved. In numerous cases, figuring out what is reality and what is an untruth is very troublesome. The creator shot specialists while they met self-destructive patients who needed an end of the week goes to leave the facility. In one of these meetings, a patient named Mary said she was feeling much improved and was conceded an end of the week pass. Yet, before she left, Mary admitted that she had lied and was without a doubt anticipating returning home and ending her own life. Without Mary's admission, the specialists would have lost a patient because of their powerlessness to decide if she was coming clean. Was there any way this could have been maintained a strategic distance from? While there are miniature articulations that can show when individuals are lying, these small developments are practically indistinct. Think about Mary's meeting. Miniature articulations can get away from the natural eye under ordinary conditions, yet the creator had the option to spot them by experiencing the recorded meeting outline by outline. The creator went through over 100 hours inspecting Mary's 12-minute meeting, and in the end, he zeroed in on a second when the specialist got some information about her tentative arrangements. Quickly following the inquiry, an anguished appearance flashed over Mary's face for only one twelfth of a second before being concealed by a grin. This alarming miniature articulation seemed multiple times through the film, uncovering that Mary was concealing her actual goals. In this way, while these miniature articulations frequently get away from the unaided eye, Screening shot meetings to recognize them could be an approach to dodge future expected misfortunes. Passionate criminologists now and then need to exploit the apparatuses available to them. Emotions revealed, recognizing faces and feelings to improve communication and emotional life by Paul Ekman Book Review. Having the option to peruse outward appearances and recognize the emotions individuals are feeling is a profoundly helpful aptitude. Not exclusively would this be able to prompt distinguishing lies and perceiving when a grin is pretentious, be that as it may, all the more significantly, perceiving the regular emotions we as a whole offer can prompt more sympathy. Don't hesitate to communicate your emotions. On the off chance that you've quelled your misery or outrage in the past out of dread of seeming helpless, attempt to reconnect with those sentiments to have a more beneficial connection with your emotions. To assist you with doing this, remain before a mirror, and reproduce the outward appearances that were depicted in these sections. You ought to have the option to perceive when you get the articulations right, which will assist you with associating with your emotions and beat the unfortunate propensity for restraining them.